Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Greetings and salutations. Thank you for listening or watching, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. As always, you can find us on uh, YouTube, the podcast app, and SoundCloud, the website. And all our links, our contact info, all that fun stuff, down below us or around. We won't keep it secret from you. If you want to talk to us, please don't be afraid Please to. do. Yeah, guys, we yeah. are giving away stuff. I think today's the last day for the giveaway. Yep. So if you're watching this episode, go follow us on Instagram, as well as the partners who are taking part in that. I believe there are four others. Yeah, uh, giving away some cool, cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of good right. stuff. There's yeah. like an original Soren, uh, an altered art Ajani. We're giving away a gift pack, which... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's uh, free stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, Man of Madness, Dr. Snapcaster, Foil yeah. Black Lotus, and Dejinkies. Or Jinkies. Jinkies. MTG. We've card. never had to say it on camera. No, we've really never know. have. But Jinkies? Is it Jinkies? I think so. Because I picture like lost my glasses. Jinkies. Yeah, Jinkies. Maybe. But hey, his, all out. of their links know. are in the dis- are, uh, in the description below, as well as linked onto yeah. the post on Instagram. That's so their Insta page. If you like do that. looking at pretty magic cards, seeing cracker packs, they do all that stuff over on Instagram. Yep. So please uh, check that out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So things to talk about today. Um, we're going to kick off with our random card of the day, as always. We are going to talk about our commander stream that we had this yeah, past weekend. we had a, a late night hang. Very late Hangout night. session with um, uh, Mr. Andrew. Yeah, our good friend Andrew. Over so from we'll, Grand Slam. We'll very briefly talk about that. There's not tons to talk about there, I guess, no, but we'll go over it a little bit. Um, and then continuing our deck building tips and tricks, I suppose, we're... Tips yeah. and tricks. Well, Tips mostly. Yeah, it's really, um, it's really for you, uh, for you newbies. Yeah, we're we're gonna be talking about mana curves today and how yeah. they relate mostly to limited, but also in constructed formats. Um, we're gonna touch it. We're gonna caress it briefly. Yes, perfect. And then that's uh, a weird thing to wink at. I'm sorry. Really weird thing to wink at. And then <laughs> obviously our question of the week, and then our crack a pack. Mm. So, uh, I guess kicking off with our random card of the day. Oh, Are you let's, ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one. <laughs> Uh, Spear Point Oread. So this is a nymph from Theros. Get excited. A 2-2 two, two for 3. <laughs> uh, this was one of the uh, bestowed creatures, the enchantment creatures. Um, it's got bestow for 6. Uh, the vanilla creature has first strike for a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Uh, stick it on a creature, and enchanted creature gets 2-2. Two, two, uh, gets plus 2, plus 2, and has first strike. Good um, limited. I mean, it's okay and limited. Yeah, so... It's not great, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so on a on a th- three CMC body, I think a, a two two is it needs upside, and first strike is big upside and limited. Yeah, for sure. Because we talk about the uh, we'll talk about curve in a second. This is kind of perfect for that. But you, you talk about um, move my keys out of my pocket. I'm sitting on it. <laughs> Did not feel good. Uh, needing upside for cards like that, and evergreen text being so strong in limited formats. Uh, Death touch is probably one of the staples and strongest effects yeah uh, death touch stalls a board and affects a board maybe more than other any other evergreen text yes i would agree i mean, take stalls out i guess and just affect a board yeah well because you can theoretically have a one one route with death touch that can trade for yeah. a seven seven trampler you know and it's yeah. like well that's really yeah. not great so right yeah uh death touch is so strong and first strike just completely gets around that yeah so yeah. having it uh, on a two-two body for three is I'm I'm okay with that honestly, mm-hmm. but having upside at the end because you can think about it on your curve in several different places right exactly. with its bestow. So if you want to give your seven-seven with trample first strike, you can do that with this for six mana. And if you're playing a bomb later, you probably will have six mana already. Um, the next turn probably, but I mean. And what's really cool about bestow is if the creature that the the enchantment is attached to dies you get this bestow mm-hmm. creature back onto the field so it's like yeah. added value it sort of protects you against removal it's a like, bit it's like reverse totem armor yeah sort of in a weird um, way yeah it, it really is like, it. Yeah. um so it's actually a really good limited card mm-hmm. as far as you know just being a solid card i don't think it's like it's not a yeah. bomb or anything crazy but it fits no. early in the curve it mm-hmm. also fits late game so it has its upsides yeah i think you t- i think you take spear point uh in limited if you're if you're looking that way. Yeah. Um, Red aggro kind of deck. Go yeah. for it. Not, not constructed. But Nope. Not constructed. But that's fine. <laughs> Theros, as a as a set, you know, we harp on it a lot. It wasn't great. Um, but it was pretty fun to draft, I will say. Yeah. It was a different um, a different take for me. The bestow feature was one I liked a lot. Not as much as heroic, but that's just... 
personal oh. preference. I wanted heroic to work so badly. I forced it and it didn't. But no. that's because I I was bad. Yeah, heroic. Well, heroic is bad. Yeah, I mean, that's really not great. It's not a good mechanic. So it, it, it never. Yeah. Yeah. So inter- I mean, it's not a bad card. I'm happy to see that. And at common, so it's likely that you would get one during. Yeah, the I am too. And it is kind of a great card to um, kick us off into the mana curve. Yeah. Topic. But subject. we do have to very briefly mention our commander games. Oh yeah. We, um, um, so yeah, yeah, if you if you missed the stream, the video is up on our YouTube. But basically, we had. Will and myself and Andrew, mm-hmm. uh, who you've heard us mention on the show before. He's a really good friend of ours. He's streamed with us before as well. Yeah, he has streamed with us uh, once or twice. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was just once. Oh, we cubed, but we didn't stream that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's a really good player. He's a really good friend of ours, and it was really mm-hmm. awesome to have him on the show. Yeah, he's uh, loads of fun. So go watch that. I would encourage it anybody to. It is not to. safe for work. Um, yeah. I know we have actually several kids who uh, yeah, yeah. watch. So, yeah, be cautious. Throw that Although, out there. It's not as bad as some of our others have <laughs> been. That's to be sad fair. but true. That's sad but true. Um. So, what were you playing? I don't know. I still don't know. It um, was some Boros deck. It was. It was a uh, Boros like giant anthem aggro with the big uh, three three double strike vigilance giant lady. I'm not. It sure. was basically the Boros precon. Yeah, it was a, a precon with ago. a few things like taken out. Uh. It, I mean, it, it looked fine. I had little combos that I found throughout the deck, and it was nothing crazy. It was like, give one, give Inferno Titan, like, Mirage, and yeah, copy it. Yeah. It, it. It looked sweet, but it, it was like missing. It was, cool, but... it was missing optimization. I'll yeah. say that. But I mean, it yeah, makes sense. It was fine. Um, uh, Andrew played. Missouri. Yeah. He in... was playing Mono Green Elves, so. Uh, yeah, Azuri is basically the best one for it. And, I mean, his deck looked pretty sweet, actually. We took some time beforehand to I'm tune gonna, his deck. I'm going to disagree. There's another elf commander who I think is far better than Azuri. Which is? I wish you wouldn't have asked me because I forgot her name. Uh, but she is a black-white hybrid mana for one. And a green-white? think so that's a black white that's a black white i know, you're, talking about. I I know you're talking about i don't know the name of her but she's a token <sighs> generator basically yeah and uh, holy she snot. is sweet she floods the board like nobody's business yeah yeah. and pumps them yeah because pretty sweet i think she, i think she says green creatures you control and white creatures you control i turned off my phone so i wasn't distracted dang it anyway sorry about that look her up look her up <laughs> she's fun yeah yeah but his deck i mean it looks pretty sweet it was a solid oh, it's elf great. deck and oh, it's great it it had some good pieces i played yeah. kess it's good it's good deck. it's really good it's i fine. won uh everybody thought i was playing storm even though i told him i wasn't playing we storm. joked a lot we knew he wasn't playing storm i played but... doomsday which is so much better <laughs> yeah. um i didn't actually win off of doomsday though i just nope. bounced everything a lot so good turns out kess replaying cyclonic rift is kind of good it's, it's really good yeah. cyclonic rift being one of the strongest cards in commander yeah Ugh. it Ugh. was really fun i bounced commanders like crazy yeah it was loads of fun um it was great. yeah it wasn't for them it's a good time <laughs> i enjoyed it it's a good time <laughs> um yeah so we played commander and that was good yeah do that there's not much to talk about with it just because it was literally just a oh. game. We just thought we would do it for fun and it didn't take too long. Yeah. Go go um, uh, check out the stream if you are so inclined. Yeah, please do. But it was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, okay. Mana curve time. The important stuff. Transition. We need we need more inserts. Um, okay. Do the thing, Will, talk about it. So last episode, we brought you uh when did we bring them land distribution right? land distribution yeah. right stuff like that optimizing land uh land counts in decks um so kind of the twin of that the thing that goes hand in hand is the concept of a mana curve uh and this is a an element to deck building that applies to every format everywhere commander limited standard vintage everywhere mm-hmm. um and it is vastly different in well i won't say vastly but it is different in each of those formats um, and changes from deck to deck. It's it's so vast, but we're going to cover it briefly here. Yep. Um, so when we talk about mana curve, Kevin, what's the first thing you think about of mana curves? What does it affect in your deck? So it's basically the efficiency and the speed of your deck, right? Like mm-hmm. Because essentially the idea for a quote-unquote perfect curve in a limited environment 
is you sort of want, if this is your low end and this is your high end, mm -hmm. you sort of want it to do this, right? You want a bell curve. You want a bell curve because you don't want too many low drops because then the power level of your deck is just going to be bad. You don't want too many high drops because you'll never be able to play them in the early game and you'll right. lose. And so you want more on the middle ground mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to play the majority of the time while you're playing. Sure. And that just helps you get there. It helps you speed things out and that sort of a thing. And the yeah. lower down you get, theoretically, the faster your deck will be. And so that's really the idea. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, touched on a few things. Uh, in limited, where you want the bell curve. This is because you're never going to optimize your deck to the point of it needs to be super quick and I can make a red deck wins. You can, but it's never going to be... It's not going to be what you think it will be. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be as great as a constructed red deck wins right. because you can get, you know, four one ones with haste and four... It's, it's totally different. It takes yeah. on a completely different form. Um, so what you want is efficient sinks for your mana, efficient spells at every turn, mm -hmm. um, and and then some. So that's limited. In Constructed, it really affects the speed and efficiency of yeah. the deck. Um, so we just talked about red deck wins. In red deck wins, you really won't see cards above four mana ever. Yeah, even three, honestly. Yeah, it's like depending. Them. I think Hezeret is the yeah. one of the most expensive cards to ever go in red deck wins, and that's only ramen up red in this cycle of standard. Yeah, And I mean, uh, Glorybringer is in a few lists, but as like... It's like sideboard tech yeah. more than actual Honestly, against deck. the mirror, kind of. Yeah, it's pretty you put sweet. In, you put in <laughs> Glorybringer. Um, but that's because red deck wins, its goal is to win within his first three to four turns right is to flood the board with guys get value out pitch their hand and just swing it face and the way you get to do that is playing really cheap spells exactly. all the time yeah. so it's curve is yeah it is a, a <laughs> slanted right yes <laughs> um math nerds gotcha uh but that being said <laughs> mana curve in limited is in my opinion vastly more important than it is in constructed considering it it definitely is you think so yeah well i mean the idea so you if you've played any sort of magic you probably have heard the term curving out mm -hmm. and in limited that's one of the most important things you can do regardless of what deck you're playing or what archetype you're playing because curving out basically means on turn one i had something to play on turn two i had a follow-up play turn three i had another one and so mm -hmm. on and so forth up until you start playing a couple spells per turn but it's basically about being efficient and playing good spells on every one of your turns and being proactive. And that's something that in limited is so crucial because if you just wait around and dirtle for the first couple turns, you are now so far behind, it's really hard to actually mm -hmm. come back into that game. Right. Um, so unless, I mean, control decks and stuff, but that's notoriously why control decks tend to not be quite as good in limited right. because they're reactive, they're not as proactive. Right. And so that's why curving out is so important you have to do it really yeah. i mean that's that's what you're wanting to do at yeah. least. we talk about winning on the board and limited is nine times out of ten the place where the game is won mm -hmm. and absolutely if you can't put things on the board you're not going to win on the board usually yeah. so there you go um there is there exists in magic uh theory philosophy whatever you want to say <laughs> kind of a golden rule for mana curves and limited um i jotted it down i found it and People have different opinions on where and when, but this is kind of my favorite iteration of it. Um, so when you're curving in limited, when you're drafting, my favorite way to go is about two to three one drops at any one time yeah. in a deck. That's about it. You want to stay there. Three is really, kind of depends on the deck, how aggressive it is, but three is really, it's where you want to stay. And that's my favorite thing to put in, in the one drop. Can you guess it? Can I guess it? Yeah. Your favorite thing? My favorite thing in one drop. Combat tricks? You're close. Am I? Yeah. I don't know what. It's on summon, baby. Oh, God. It's on summon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, so one summon at one is my favorite, but about three one drops, depending on what they are. That's, I. Th so really quick, I do want to touch on that. Mm -hmm. And this, that's something, that's part of why I said combat tricks, because... The, the thing about combat tricks is, like, yes, a lot of them cost one and two mm -hmm. mana. That's sort of how it goes. But it's not like you're going to be playing those on turn one and right. two. And so, ideally, 
out of those two or three one drops, you don't want them all to be combat tricks, right? Well, like, yes and no. You, it depends what deck you're running, but ideally you'd want to have one or two creatures with maybe a combat trick or something along those lines. That's what I would ideally want. Here's here's my, my follow-up to that, because in the two drop spots, uh, I'm running about four to six two drops. Okay. Two drop creatures... Really, sorceries, if they're removal at two, instance yeah. at two, God, I, there, I don't think there's been a really good removal spell at two in a while at instant no. speed. Walk well, the lightning plank. strike is okay. Walk the plank is okay. Lightning strike, it yeah, that's three. Yeah, it is three. That's true. Um, I mean, it's a worse lightning bolt. But we so. didn't get it. Is that in Exelon? I believe lightning so. Strike? Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'm almost positive. It well, is. that's good then. Yeah. But honestly, it, for, for non-creature spells a two drop i need really crisp removal yeah or I mean, you're not really gonna find an engine at two in a spell so don't worry about that really although two is like a really prime place to get like tappers or something like that and so that's like premium creature slots for those i think oh yeah so the two drop slot is in my opinion one of the most important things one of the most important slots for creatures you're getting they're not going to be the most powerful creatures, but they're going to be efficient enough. At two drops, you see plenty of death touch, first strike, um, things of that nature. There is Honestly, a... you see a lot of like bears, too. Like, yeah. Just two twos for mm -hmm. two, and that's okay sometimes. There's that's nothing wrong with filler. playing a few two twos. Yeah. It's, it's uh, good. Yeah, you're going to... They're usually going to be useful throughout the, throughout yeah. the game, even on turn five. Mm -hmm. three, three mana spell, two mana spell. That's an okay turn five. Don't yeah, I, yeah. Don't be worried about that. It's if more you about having a play, yet. honestly. Right, at that right. point. So two drops to me, they stay cheap. They they do a lot of work in your deck, depending on the set, depending on the format. But usually they are going to be creatures that uh, will put you in the game, will kind of stabilize you. Yeah. So two drop is paramount to me. Uh, and this is honestly when my curve starts to go down. So spikes at two starts to go down. So I'm running about three to four three drops. Wow. Here's okay. Yeah, here's where I'm thinking engines, removal, yeah, stuff like that. Premium removal is usually yeah. three. Any creature that gives me super advantage. Uh, we talked about the Dryad? Oriad? Oriad. Oriad, yeah, yeah. The Oriad earlier as being a really good spell at three. So yeah. she's a 2-2 two -two with first strike, which is really good board presence, but she's more later. I'd be okay running her at three. Yeah. I'd be okay. Not maybe just one. But, just one 100 yeah. percent, just one yeah but it so isn't bad these creatures are going to be creatures that not only give you great board presence but you want them to have some uh immediate effect on some the game, relevant right? ability yeah. or something your enters the battlefield bounces the thing your enters the battlefield taps a guy uh an anthem creature maybe yeah um and limited anthem creatures are they're not as powerful as new players might think they are but they're important yeah um three is it is easy to sink a lot of attention into the three drop spot but on turn three like, i need to stay flexible that early on in limited I yeah, think. yeah so if i have access to one of my combat tricks in the one drop slot and i got another two drop guy i might just drop another another dude and hold up one mana be able yeah. to unsummon something that's fair something like that um four it's two to four spells so if i'm playing a slower deck if i'm getting premium removal or premium sorcery something that is just really nice uh i can sink more into four drops uh torment of venom is a good example here yeah uh, torment from hours of devastation uh was really good removal it didn't yeah. work uh, Super good. and it was it was four mana mm -hmm. at sorcery speed uh we talk about valuing removal above other things it's okay if it's expensive you you probably take it you want to side it in. yeah a lot of people so this is something that i've seen and i've been guilty of in my early days of drafting i would say is i'll see you know i'll open a pack or something like that and there's a mm -hmm. few decent you know two three drop slot cards mm -hmm. creatures mainly um and then there's like a five drop removal spell yeah and i'm like oh well, that's terrible right like but actually not really not it's all generally time, yeah. pretty good like you yeah. don't want too many five drop removal spells you want maybe right. one max two but it's good to have that and generally at five mana i believe and i don't remember the name of the card but there was a it was four and a black uh i believe from ours and basically it was exile target creature oh yeah um you know what i'm talking about yes i do our uh was it one of that it wasn't an hour it was like a common right. or an uncommon was, uh, but the fact of, what that means Sting is of venom 
Maybe? No, no, that was, that was the a two. Lethal Sting or whatever was the the little, like... Anyway, yeah. the idea, though, is that it's unconditional removal. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's expensive, but you're in limited. It's not like yeah. people are winning on turn three the majority of the time. Like, you're no, expecting you, yeah. to win on the board later in the game. It's supposed to go long. That's what limited does. So yeah. it's not unreasonable at all to get to five mana much more past that to be honest i mean yeah. a lot of times you know you end up with a ton of lands on the battlefield by the end of the game yeah, so absolutely. that honestly five mana for a removal spell four mana for a removal spell that's not bad and limited that's exactly where you want to be most of the time um i'd say with removal that powerful yeah yeah so it's it's spot removal but it's exile which exactly. is strong on its own and yeah strong on its own and for the set was very relevant because you yeah. had things reanimating like crazy um and yes, yeah. unconditional, just exile target thing. Yep. Three words, crisp. It's like murder, <laughs> but better-ish. I mean, murder is more efficient. More efficient, but it's not permanent. I think for the set, for the, the, set, the exile, the exile is more important. More important but yeah. yeah, murders. That's why I hesitate. Better-ish. Yeah. Uh, Everything in magic is relevant. So like <laughs> somewhere and somehow, you know, yes. it's like there's always yes. going to be a situation where one card's better than another. Right. It's just a fact. So above four, uh, we start getting into bombs. We start getting into game swingers. Really just you're beating. This is how I'm going to win, hopefully. And I'll yeah. slam this thing down and I'm good. Uh, so five drops. One to three. So I say three because, to Kevin's point, there are powerful spells, powerful removal at five yeah. that, that you might want. So I feel okay having a place to put the mana later, especially if it's something like Exile Target Thing yeah. or Drax Cards Game X Life. Um, coupled together, not Angel's Mercy. Um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, in the six drop, if I run six drops or above, and this is like six and up, I want to run like two. Yeah. Maybe. Um, in limited, two bombs. That's enough. Uh, yeah, that's probably good. You only have a 40-card deck in Limited, so yeah. you're more likely to find your bombs. Mm-hmm. And because the games are going longer, you're also more likely to find them. Yeah. It's like, you know, even if you don't have regular card draw in your deck or anything like that, you're going to be digging through at least half your deck, usually. Um, uh, yeah, I'd say a good portion. You will probably you will it, probably yeah. see your... You, I think you'd see them in the majority of your games. Yeah. I'll say that. Unless you're just really unlucky. It can happen. It can happen. Um, but yeah, card draw yeah, on Limited will help you with that. <laughs> um yeah so why why do we make the curve like this well we talked about it spending mana efficiently we talked about it in the last episode the more mana you spend the more likely you are to win the game yeah so across the the length of the game if i had a one drop here two drop there one drop two drop every drop drop i feel good <laughs> i feel good i built my board maybe i had answers to things maybe not I'm not going to win all the games just by spending the most mana. No, I mean, it's not how it works. If it is, we But statistically all speaking, you yeah. have a better shot. Yeah, because um, you're, you're you're just physically doing things. Yeah, yeah. So to ensure that I am doing things, I want to make sure that I have an even CMC across my... Not an even CMC, of course, but a spread of CMC a across spread, my deck. Yeah. Where... What kind of spells am I going to cast the majority of the time? Is it going to be an instant or sorcery? I'm not going to combo off, so probably not. Yeah. Is it going to be a guy that hits the board, gives me presence, gives that's me threat? That's what you want. Most of the time. Yeah. In limited. Um, so that's something in limited that is far more complicated. Do um, you want to touch on limited anymore for Curve? Uh, I don't think so. I think, I mean, that covers it for me. I would, uh, in respect to the way you distribute your Curve, mm. I would say the two and three drop slot, I agree. I think it's really easy to focus a lot on the three drop slot, so I don't mm. want to say that I would... 100% focus more on it I would focus more on evening them up just a bit more mm. um, just because turn two plays are like two drop creatures or two drop plays whatever they are tend to be really good in the early game but if you keep drawing them yeah you can play a couple of them but a three drop just feels a little bit better to me and it's it all can. it can yeah yeah it can um, there are really good uh, uncommons though that are played at two that's fair with evergreen effects that yeah. that i want to stick in my deck and, and have stick around that's fair um, and some of them are at three granted yeah yeah but the I'm, two and three drop slot 
it's really to me those are sort of the most important slots oh, as far as filling them out absolutely because you know you're gonna pick up a bomb even if it's like just a seven seven for seven that's a bomb there so you you're fine yeah. there's nothing wrong with a vanilla seven seven right no. that's just really seven good damage is a lot that is a lot in limited you and it's hard be, to deal yeah. with it's not like you can just burn that out um you can't burn it you can remove it though you can removal. remove it exile target burn um but exactly. you know that that's it, those are sort of the sweet spots for decks. Two Definitely. and three drop is really where you need to focus yeah. and get Definitely. your utility for your end game. Is that where? That's sort of how I would phrase it. That's where you and I differ. Yeah. Where in limited, like utility is like bounty of the Luxa, mm. like gift of the God Pharaoh. Well, I'm thinking more of like tappers and like okay, okay, sure. mana sinks at three mana or sure. something like that. Because a lot of creatures right now, um, the green blue merfolk does a lot of things but it's a three mm. drop it does, has two effects you can draw you're talking about the the gold creature the yeah yeah the lord kind of sort of I it's mean, not it's, a lord it has a lord. mana it doesn't, effects yeah right? it's Activated abilities. it's got like one ability you can uh yeah. put a one one counter on something and then the other right. ability you remove it and draw a card so it's a draw engine it's sort of the engine for the deck right that's that's great. what i'm thinking when i think utility not necessarily spells like bounty of lux like enchantments sure, sure, sure. or artifacts okay so we'll take that example that's great i want targets i can put that on cheaply yeah i can play a two drop guy and if it's a one mana activated ability mm -hmm. my two two suddenly a three three maybe he's already got first strike and yeah that's fair. or lifelink and lifelink again it's at a, it's at its premium yeah yeah in not i mean it's... honestly evergreen effects for the most part in general mm -hmm. are at a premium and limited that's why flying decks are just yep. good and limited like yeah i'll give you another example i just thought of <laughs> fog bank fog bank yes. is at two Oh, Fog, Fog Bank, Bank's good. It, it's not in the set, but Fog Bank is one of my favorite two drops ever. It's so ever. good. That it, being said, Guard Gomezoa or whatever it is. Guard Gomezoa? It's at three. Guard Gomezoa. But which one's better? Uh, they're both basically the same, so I would rather have the Fog Bank. I get that. Exactly. I'm just saying that, like, you know. It's because it comes down to efficiency's sake. Yeah, yeah. Because across the set, you're going to get weird combo things at three. You're going to get, I hit the battlefield, I do stuff at three, or that, that Merfolk. Mm -hmm. I am an engine for your deck at three. The beetle um, in Amonkhet, the Golgari one, I think it's at three. The spider. The spider. Not yeah. from ours. It's That's a, a great card. It is great. Man. It's an engine, but on its own, it's four presence. Yeah. It's not. A, it's a one-four, okay. but... Yeah. I mean, it's got a big butt. Butts are Big important. butts matter in magic. It's true. And that means two things. Um... <laughs> Do we want to talk in constructed? Thought about at all? the meme. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wanted to so, segue into yeah, Peter off bit. from limited and talk about constructed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So limited is very important, but in constructed, what's great about constructed is it doesn't matter as much. <laughs> it still matters. Well, yeah, of course. But not as much. But because you have access to all the good cards, the best of the mm -hmm. the cards, it's like, well, you know you're going to be able to get the good ones, right? Because that's what Absolutely. Constructed is. So, Absolutely. like, you, I mean, you take Curve into account, but generally it's like, okay, I want this effect. What is the cheapest card that gives me that effect? Right. And is still, like, widely used everywhere. You know, like, you, get to, you can use it in a variety of situations. You get to focus on a strategy in Constructed and find the cheapest, most efficient way to do that thing. Yeah. Or even if you get excited about a certain card, you get to find ways to turn that card on and get it going. Whereas in limited, you have to focus on a card, or yeah. rather focus on winning as your strategy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not how I wanted to say it. It sounded a lot better. <laughs> yeah, the cheapest way. Oh, 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 you have to make your strategy the, as cheap as possible in yeah. limited. Is that what I'm saying? I don't know what Does you're saying. I'm right? just sort of letting you do your thing at this point. I had the thought. I lost it. Look, the point is, <laughs> the point is, gents, gents and ladies, ladies and gents, it's not as important and constructed. You will find your things at a premium. You net deck for days. It's fine. Like, try different things out. You have that option. You can't really test in limited for the deck you're going to play because you never know yeah, what it's no going to be. no clue what you're going to get. You can go into a strategy. Parks always plays a blue-white something. Yeah, he does. Awesome. That's great. Tempo. I like to stick with like black red stuff. So yeah, you I'm guys are on opposite there. ends, aren't you? We are, yeah. I like to uh, zap your things and. In burn limited, and I kind of I don't know what I would go for usually. I mean, I generally, I mean, I'm I like to be the control guy, but like in limited, mm -hmm. it's just not as good. Like no, 
generally not speaking, good, control. But... I mean, control's not bad. It's not that. It's just like generally speaking, they're good for. It's good tempo. It's good, it's tempo. good tempo. Yeah, but and tempo is is <laughs> tempo is great. Tempo flying in limited uh, tempo is an important factor. Um, is... but that being said, so when you're curving for constructed stuff, like I said, you have your strategy. Like let's say. I I think I didn't think of an example firsthand. Um, oh, I got it. So, monastery mentor. Yeah. Works with any instant and sorcery to beef it up. Any non creature permanent, I believe. Not permanent. Uh, spell. Or not spell. Excuse me. Yeah, right. Yeah. So monastery mentor hits field anytime he casts a non creature or non creature spell. Get a guy prop trigger. Yep. Dope. You can cast any spell for that. You could cast Divination, for example. Divination to get your prowess triggers, draw two cards for three. Or, for instance, you could cast Opt. Scry two, draw a card. Get your thing. And I've got two extra mana. Yeah. So which one, when you're curving, seems better? I just said you should have either no or three one drops. But it's constructed and yeah. prowess trigger. You see, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Do you see the line? Well, and that's it, that's a phrase I haven't said in a do while. Do you see the line? Do you see the line? Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is why yeah. you see a lot of variety as mm -hmm. far as mana curves go in constructed decks. Right. For instance, we were talking about red deck wins and things like lantern control, where like the max you have is generally three, maybe four. Yeah. It's like that is the max. Most of your stuff is one. End of story. That's like just what you do. Right. However, then you get stuff like Eldrazi Tron, and it's like, yeah, you've got a couple one drop mm -hmm. things that are helping you ramp, but then you just like skip three, four, five, six, and you go to like seven and eight and like 10 and 15. Right. And like that's just normal because mm -hmm. so you end up with like this weird sort of opposite than what you would see in Limited, right? Like, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's just normal for that deck. And so you get this wide variety, but it's because. You're building to a strategy, not building to a curve. Your curve will work with that strategy as long as you pick those most efficient cards and get that, you know, sort of strategy working the way you right. need it to. Right, and that's a, and that's another, like, nitpicky thing you can talk about is getting that, yeah, like what we just talked about, Fog Bank, Guard Gamoza. Yeah. So they do essentially the same thing. They both have Defender. They both have Flying. Combat damage is prevented. Yeah. Or. In Gargamos, it's prevent all combat damage. With Fogbank, it's prevent all damage, period, I think. I think so. I think that's the difference. The only real difference between the two cards is Fogbank is a 0-2. Yes. Gargamos uh, is guard a one, is three. a 1-3. So theoretically, you could kill something, but nobody's going to swing into it right. with like as an X-1. That's just kind of dumb. Well, the other difference, I think, is you can burn Gamozo, right? Because it's combat damage. Yeah. You can yeah. bolt it, but you can't bolt Fogbank. It's prevent all damage. So... Yeah, I, I think that's. I correct. think that's correct. I could be incorrect, but I don't know. Might be backwards, or I might just be wrong. <laughs> I should have done homework. Anyway, um, <laughs> you all did that more than me. I don't know, but all that to say <laughs> is, in the decks I'm going to play those in, they might be a mill deck, might be a control deck, what have you. I've got the choice to put both or only one in. I have to kind of decide because everything on that card I'm paying for in mana, right? It's a set price at two mana, and I'm paying for it. Mm -hmm. Is it? Do I get more at three? Is it okay to cut cost and play this thing at two? Because the the effect is there. I get my defender. I'm I'm stalling a board. Mm -hmm. What am I giving up? What am I gaining? But, like those are the the pros and cons you have to weigh with the mana curve. Yeah. Um, when you talk about finding the most efficient strategy. And this is all right. to say that you're really optimizing your deck at this point. Of right? course. Like it, it, this is all just different ways to say that. But yeah. yeah. I mean, right. we've been sort of, I mean, in the last episode, we talked about optimizing mm -hmm. lands and this one, the curve was the consideration. Yeah. And so it's not, I mean, generally the best cards, when I say the best, I mean, the generally the best ones that you see most often, things like that, they're sort of sorted out, right? Like if you're playing in modern, a red deck wins, you're going to play a goblin guide because it's right. just kind of the best one drop ever for that definitely for that deck not the best one drop ever right maybe death rate shaman um anyway in my opinion <laughs> death rate shaman is insane yeah but you know it's just the best one drop for that deck right kind of end of story mm -hmm. then there's like swift spear and there's other good creatures but it's like they these have all been set out you know what they are so it's just like yeah. you just sort of play those and that's why you default to that right yeah and that's why net decking has become sort of like 
kind of normal because it's like everybody oh, knows what the best normal. cards are. It's just you go for those cards. And it's completely story. normal. We've had this topic. Before. We've had this yeah, discussion yeah. before. It's completely. There's nothing wrong. Nothing with wrong net with decking. net decking if it's done correctly. You can't just buy a list off off of TCG player and just for, shuffle it and yeah. play and get upset at Magic. Then you're just being kind of dumb. <sighs> that's like half the fun for me is taken away. I love deck building, so that's yeah, yeah. It just kind of seems weird to do that to me, but that's. I really speaking of deck building, I really we're so off topic now, but fine. I really enjoyed uh, building Kess as a commander. I, I bet you did. It was really fun. So for this again, off topic. Hey, whatever. It's your podcast. But it's half our mine. podcast. Um, the thing that I did with it is like you know I looked up the normal cards that go with it. EDH EDH Rex, excuse me. Sure. It's a very good resource if you're building a commander deck. Right. And so I thought, well, I'll look at some strategies. I'll look at some variants and just get a, th- a feel for what I want to do. And so the most common thing, obviously, was Storm. And so I was like, well, let me put together my own Storm list. So I did, and then I sort of compared it to the other decks. And I was like, yeah, it's re- reasonably close. I added in some other stuff. But then I changed it because I didn't want to play Storm because everybody gets mad when I play Storm. <laughs> eh, so I played Doomsday. Will was not happy uh, when we... Uh, Play commander. I, I was upset. Understandably, I guess. But anyway, I'm just saying deck building is really, really fun. And it so, is. like net decking, again, it's not a bad thing. A lot of people no. do it. I do it. But as long as you understand that and you hey, can't just shuffle up the deck and play the list and expect to be good at I, it, you should do it too. Yeah, you really like, should. If you're trying to be competitive. Yeah. Should. If not, just to understand. If not to get a really good polished deck, just to understand. Yeah, like yeah, absolutely. You should just find out what people are playing. Mm-hmm. That deck is the best way. Stop complaining, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound like a child. Um, what were we talking about? Got off about? topic. I don't know. What are we talking about, Kev? We're talking about some optimizing stuff. decks. Yeah. You default to things. That's kind of it, honestly. Yeah. I mean, curve considerations are mm-hmm. important, but again, in constructed, it's all sort of we know what is yeah. good. So. Um, briefly, uh, and constructed the speed of the deck matters a lot or yeah. that that thought should come up a lot more to you yeah um because in red deck wins you could fill your deck with just two drops and be have what looks like a strong list but that's not as fast as yeah. like the vanilla red deck wins because there's probably stronger creatures at two than goblin guide yeah there probably is. i can't think of any right now but uh, right probably probably I mean, scavenging is it's not red but anyway <laughs> regardless that doesn't help your strategy right right that's not as fast you yeah. you play it a turn later than your other things and then turn two you can't play two of those yeah right so the speed of the deck uh curve and speed of the deck are the two most applicable yeah yeah those two go very mm-hmm. hand in hand um and i that's do not, also want to yeah. mention when building a constructed deck um and to your point of speed and everything like that mm-hmm. really you should have if you're trying to be competitive, you should have like an optimal turn that you're trying to win. Absolutely. In mind when you Bless build you. the deck. So like Storm, the optimal turn is like in modern turn three, I think. It's like it's possible to do that. That's what you're shooting for. More realistically, it's gonna be a turn four win, but that's what you shoot for, right? And yeah. so when you're building the deck, you should be able to play it out and test it in such a way that you can now win on turn three. Right. But that's a possibility. It's not something that happens only once every 100 games. You want it to happen, you know, 15, 20 mm-hmm. times out of 100 games to give you that high percentage. And if it's yeah. not that high, how can I optimize to make it that high? And Absolutely. So that's sort of where curve comes into play when you are building constructed, I think. Yep. And that's going to come down to your selected win con. Yeah. If it's a card, if it's a combo, okay. Um, combos are pretty easier, easier and set in. Um, yeah. Aggro decks like Zoo, like Red Deck Wins, um, they're a little bit trickier. Really, it's about filling the board, yeah. putting guys out there. Honestly, like the... you don't have your optimal turn set in stone. Yeah, and like mid range is the best example I think of that. Just oh, that's because, good. Yeah. Like mid range decks generally are the decks where you see the most variance. I mm-hmm. would think because it's like it's it's sort of a toolbox deck, right? Like that can be at very the end of the easily. day. That's sort of what mid range is. Is it's just devaluing what your opponent's doing. That's why Jund is so good. Yeah, it just, it just devalues what your opponent does. Yeah, it tries but, to. It sacrifices early game mm-hmm. to make their later game stronger, really mid game. Yeah. Um, by taking away your plays if you're playing against a mid range deck. Again, like Jund. Yeah. Hand destruction. 
uh, board removal, stuff like that, and then just plays a green, ugly yeah. thing that's going to eat you. And that's the thing with those decks. If you look, if you net deck, and you look at those lists, a lot of them do have a lot of variants. It's like, yeah, you might see a lot of the same cards, mm -hmm. and that's going to happen. But not all of them are running a playset of Thoughtseize. Some of them are going to run right. Inquisition and maybe two Thoughtseize or something like that because of the life issue or something. Some of them True. are going to run Scavenging Ooze main board because it's just a solid card. Some of yeah. them are like, I'm not that worried about that in this meta, so I'm going to put it to the sideboard. You know, And it's there isn't, because there's not an optimal turn to win with that deck, it is just sort of nerfing your opponent's strategy yeah. completely you kind of have to understand the goal yeah of the deck. they're more meta based lists and so you need to understand what's the best i guess piece or card that can work with this meta for the cheapest amount and that's sort of how mm -hmm. that sort of comes together but yeah one last uh little thought and tidbit that i'll throw out there about optimizing decks and such um i don't remember who said this it was a video online about philosophy that i was watching the other day because I do that now, apparently. That's good. I've become my father. Hey, Dad. Uh, <laughs> hey, he doesn't, Will's dad. He doesn't watch this. <laughs> he doesn't know what the heck I'm saying. Although I did the other day when I went over to his house because yeah. I was in, in Charlotte doing stuff. There was a pile of magic cards on the coffee table. Like, who plays magic? My nine-year-old brother was like, me and Dad started playing. What? Like, Holy crap. We should bring him yeah. on the show. All right, I'm sold. I'm down for that. I'd love to have we'll him. We'll do a stream. That'd be fun. Heck yeah. I'm like legit, I'm down for that. Like that'd yeah. be pretty fun. We so we we played some magic. I gave him a bunch of my cars I had in my car. Jake days. I think I gave him an, a box with an invocation in it. Did you really? I think he's got diabolic edict, yeah. I just didn't want to. No, Kevin. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. You can have diabolic intent. Okay. And the god I have. I don't remember which one it is. Honestly, I love the invocations. What's the one you want the most? What's the coolest? Force of Will. Yeah, I think Force has the best art in an invocation anyway. Probably. Oh, like, no. Doomsday actually, is pretty sweet. So is Thoughtseize. I was just thinking about that. Like, Thoughtseize invocation nice. is nice. I really like Doomsday, though. Uh, I just don't like Doomsday as the card. So I don't... You really don't like Doomsday. Well, as the it's card not that card. I don't like it. It's just that I wouldn't play with it. Right? Like, I I know, but it's not my <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Anyway, all the. <laughs> so ranty. What I was today. trying to say, watching a philosophy video, um, <laughs> and someone said that. He defines perfection in a thing that he's making as when I can't rem when I can't improve this thing by removal, that's when I've edged on perfection. And that really kind of sat with me for a second in terms of magic. Like if I can't improve my deck by taking things away anymore, if I don't mm -hmm. need to cut away things that aren't part of the deck, I'm in a pretty good position. Yeah. What have I got to work with? Um, so in thinking about can I make my deck faster? Can I make my deck more, more this and that? You're only going to learn that through testing. Yeah. And you're only going to learn what's best to take out or add through testing. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of my final yeah. thought. All right. My final thought sees. If you guys have any questions on mana curves, or if you have a deck list mm. that you'd like us to look at and comment on, uh, feel free to post it in the comment section. Yeah. We'd love to. Um, we are uh, we are by no means experts, no, uh, absolutely or not. or the only people talking about this. Um, the professor actually, I think, did a string of videos about deck building and mana oh, yeah. curves and and all that stuff. Uh, He's yeah. way better than us. Go watch him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. At the end of the day, uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, Wizards has articles. Um, yeah, Channel Fireball, Star City, everybody talks There's about. There's so many resources. We we touched on it briefly and we're scattered. Yeah. Um, but that's why you watch us. Maybe. I don't know. Thanks for the beard. You think so? He's a grow it out. need to trim it up a little nah, bit. you grow it out. If you can't tickle the mic with your beard, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I'll just sit here and just be like, exactly. <laughs> I hope that's picking up. <laughs> I don't know if it is. It's really not. That's kind of impressive. Anyway. <laughs> just flicked it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway um uh, yeah if you have any more questions you can ask yeah, us go absolutely. find resources uh there's tons of stuff out there you are not alone no you are not alone it's for, also for really quick if you find in your casual kitchen table games hmm. that you're playing this really cool deck that you made one time and it's just not working out maybe look at your curve first yeah i'm just gonna throw that out there yeah that's like the number one problem with kitchen table decks probably curve. 
Probably. Well, that I'd I've say noticed. I would honestly say it's optimizing lands first. Well, okay, yeah, that's kind of always the most important thing. But like, yes. assuming that that is like correct, fairly in order, and that's going to change with your curve depending yeah. on what you take out. So, but yes, I'd say me personally, I'd look at lands first, yeah, then my curve, um, because I'm not comfortable unless I've got a solid mana base. Yeah. Um, and if it's casual kitchen table magic, if I'm running all berry roots. Which I do in plenty of things. Yeah, fine. Because no problem. I'm, I'm like I'm the I'm I am who I am. I'm not gonna we apologize. We don't judge here. I'll put ten, they might. I'll I put ten planes and and ten swamps in a deck. <laughs> Watch Fair. me. Oh, that's so not a good thing to do, <laughs> especially in limited. If you have an even land count, like yeah. seven and seven. Yeah, stop. <laughs> you're wait, 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 not wait. in a good place. Sorry. You should have a main color, and then other stuff. Probably. Or else, it's, or or have really good fixing, or have right? super good fixing. That's but, another yeah. thing we didn't touch on. Fixing for me comes in like the three drop slot, like monolith. But uh, what's it? Um, the clue manolith. stones. Thank you, manolith. The clue stones. Um, I guess there are plenty of two. The signets are two. Signets are two. Um, yeah. Just realize, yeah. There were signets are two. Mind there stone. used to be a lot more at two, but they kind of upped it. Yeah. Mana creatures at two are very common though, at least at this and time. less at one now. Yeah, they're not doing. We so probably much. we have probably gone past the days of Elvish Mystic. I don't know if we'll see Elvish. Yeah, Mystic I don't think so. I wish, man. It has to good be in the stuff. right set. Like you couldn't have printed it in this set. It'd be way too good. That'd be so busted, man. Heck, I'd play it all the time. That would make me play green. Yeah, it's look. You kill Bob. <laughs> you kill Bob. You bolt the bird. Always kill the dork. Yeah, um, kill the elves. Okay. All right, so moving off of Curve again, if you do have any questions, let us know. Comment, email, do whatever you'd like. We'll figure it out, wherever yeah. it is. Yeah. Do all that, Jess. We'll help if we can. Moving on to the question of the week. Uh, so the question for this oh, past yes, week. I'm excited about this one. What is the best modern combo? And I didn't really intend. I meant more in like the current state of modern. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. Some people put banned combo decks, which, to be honest kind of works because at one point they were really good so True. i'm fine with that so in third place is technically anything that got a vote so we won't okay. go over third place okay uh we'll go over second there were three decks in second with place. two votes each i'm gonna say storm is one okay um i am gonna say ad nauseum is another mm. um i am going to say the Third mm -hmm. in second place in a combo deck in modern. In modern, yeah. I don't know. I know what I think my number one is that people would have said. Okay, but I'm not sure what my third one would be. Maybe I was never in modern. I was changing my mind. It's not my deal. I'm struggling with the third. I'm struggling with the third. Well, you're wrong on the other two. Okay, so. In second, we have Twin. Really? Splinter yeah. Twins in second? Splinter Twins in second. Um, we also have uh, Malira Pod, which... Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod was pretty insane. Um, and then Grizzlebrand combo, just Reanimator. Gifts Ungiven or something like that. Shoals. I'm, I'm not so much in agreement on the Grizzlebrand, I just don't think to it's, be honest. I just don't think it's a comp. It is a combo. I don't think it's I a mean, combo deck. It's not a combo deck, really. It's like, here's this card that gets me yeah. Grizzle Brand in the story. Combo deck, you think, okay, I play this card and just win. Yeah, it's I do the sequence of events and have won once it resolves. Yeah. Grizzle Brand, you don't win when it resolves. I mean, you're in a commanding position, but you're not you didn't win the game. Yeah, you're time. not done yet. You still Most have to you still have to swing or they have yeah. to concede or something. But if I play a nauseum and just lightning storm, they don't have a choice. Right. Tough. So First okay. place with six votes. There's Storm. only one. It yeah, has to be Storm. 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 I mean, it's the best deck right now for sure, as far as combo decks goes. Right. Um. So yeah, I'm not surprised there. Uh, there's not much to say about it. Storm's awesome. The reason I I slotted it at two mm -hmm. at first was I figured people would say Splinter Twin. Yeah, I thought people would say Splinter Twin would be the strongest modern combo ever, and I actually thought it would could have been the original Infect deck. Again, that deck won on turn two like consistently. Yeah, modern combo. 
Yeah, it was. It was the shoal with a glistener elf. It's combat on board, though. It's not well, combo. Well, but, I mean... But we just said Grizzlebrand's not a but combo. But that is an instant win most of the time. More than Grizzlebrand is. Circumstantially, you can't, like... I'm just saying... I'm gonna disagree with that. That's Infect okay. is not. I don't think Infect is a combo. It's well, just Grizzlebrand hyper... was on the list, so if we're allowing Grizzlebrand on the list, <laughs> we're not gonna take it off. I just, I just don't think it belongs there. All right. Just like Infect. Fair enough. Fair enough. Jack, is that? Yeah, that's fine. Someone said Flash Hulk, right? Yeah, someone did say. To Flash touch Hulk. on that, I thought about Flash Hulk. Flash isn't legal in Modern, right? Flash, Flash was. Flash is a white border card, I think, unless they got reprinted. But I think. Oh, I don't know. Flash, be honest. Flash is two mana. You may um, uh, play a creature card from your hand. Um, play it for its mana cost reduced by two. Uh, if you cannot, like remove it from play, like sack it basically. So what you did is you flash Hulk, sack mm-hmm. Hulk immediately, found your six drop whatever, and like there's a bunch of stuff you could do off that. Usually yeah, it's yeah. carry and feeder, um, or um, other things, but I don't think Flash is legal in modern. That's why I said. Oh, I do not know, unfortunately. No. So, um, but I do want to touch on a few of these other decks. So, one person said traumatize and fraying sanity, which I think is hilarious. No, that's awesome. It is awesome. That's awesome. I want that to get busted in modern. It won't. It just won't. I don't know, man. Um, I... somebody said scape shift, which mm. scape shift's pretty good. Um, somebody put eggs, which is definitely banned now, but that deck is dirty. Yeah, eggs that is, is a messed up deck. Um, I say it's banned now. Really, it's just Second Sunrise that's banned. If they unban that, it would be the perfect list again. Eggs is kind of dead, huh? Yeah, eggs is super dead. It's, it's, well, not it's really. a terrible deck to play against. It's really hard to play, honestly. I like, love that you would. I love that you say that because. I, I think I can count on two hands, maybe my feet, how many times you said I want to play eggs. I do want to play eggs. Hey. I want to, but, you know. I think that's a um, I did buy a lot of the pieces for it at one point. Naturally. <laughs> for the modern version. I do want to look up man. the Flash thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want to lie to the people. Um, Another person said the treasure hunt combo with uh, zombie infestation. Uh. Oh, you get me, whoever you are. <laughs> I That's built so that funny. deck on mine, and it was really fun it's to play. It's so funny. It's just so silly. It's I great. It. Hive know. Mind is another good one. Um, that was a really mm-hmm. interesting deck. So that was the Amulet Bloom deck. Yeah. And it was either, like, play Primeval Titan or play Hive Mind or both. And Hive mm-hmm. Mind's a dirty card, so that was pretty no. sweet. No. Uh, one person said Dredge. I like Dredge. I don't know that I'd... I mean, it's, I guess, a combo deck, but, like, it's kind of just an aggro deck, too. Um, Ravager is the other one that was mentioned. Ravager. Affinity. Arcbound Ravager? Yeah. Ravager Shops is what it is. Which is, I mean, it's a good deck. I don't know how much I'd consider that a combo deck, though, either. It's just a really aggro deck. Yeah, I don't... You know what I mean? Affinity's just, again, a really optimized, like... It's like, Ravager is an engine card more than, like, a combo piece. I mean, it just does things for your deck. Like, it doesn't, like... It's not like a mixture of two cards wins you the game immediately. It's just a if we're still sticking with that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It's just really good. Yeah. <laughs> Flash is from Mirage. Is that it? Yeah. So it's only legal in Legacy Vintage. Uh, well, sorry, it's banned in Legacy, restricted in Vintage, legal oh. in Commander. So yeah, yeah. the Flash Hulk thing. It's great. Yeah, I mean, super good combo. But <laughs> um, yeah. With that though, guys, we do have the next question of the week, which is. Per Will's suggestion, what is the worst ban in Magic? Mm-hmm. There, what, there have been some good ones. Yeah, there have been some good bans that needed to happen. But what's the worst one? What shouldn't have happened? What do you think? Well, my first thought was Probe, but then... Probe probably should have happened, as yeah. much as I didn't want it to. Jesus Christ, Brandon, this is why. Go away. <laughs> um, I think Second Sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um... Honestly, it's going to be a standard ban for me. Mm. Uh, Reflector Mage is my pick. That's funny. I think Aether works Marvel. Because <laughs> there was so much hate. We talked about that a lot. Yeah, but that was kind of a politics thing, too. Just saying Yeah. no one likes playing against this thing. 
and it can if it works like it's supposed to it can just win even I mean, though it's only ten yeah. percent of the games it plays, it can. We did an episode about the banning. Look it up. Look it up. There's yeah, yeah. there's numbers, info, opinions, blah blah blah. Um, yeah. I, I I say reflector mage because he's so, like he's a three drop. He just bounces a thing. He's a two three, so he's a great creature. But he's so like not. He's not that. He's not format amazing. breaking. Yeah, yeah. Like the. Um, she's big. She's the squid monster. Squid monster. Emrakul? Yeah. Emrakul. <laughs> she didn't break the format like Emrakul did. That's true. Artifact lands should never have been banned. <laughs> yes, they should have. Leave. End of story. <laughs> There's... All right, so. So, with that, we have our Cracker Pack sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. You guys have heard us talk about them a million times, and you're going to hear it a million times. As many more. times as you make it to this point in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, Guys, they are really awesome. They're just south of Charlotte, less than a 30-minute drive. And uh, they do a ton in the way of Pokemon tournaments as also just selling mm-hmm. card games in general. They've got everything. So yeah. go visit, go hang out, uh, take part in a tournament, enjoy yourself, say hey. Talking to Andrew so much the other night made me really want to start buying Pokemon again. Did it really? Honestly, yeah. Go for it. You can play in the tournaments. Come play me. <laughs> i've got more important things to do we do have goal cards for mm-hmm, this mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. mine is new cradle it Lamok. what is yours carnage tyrant the big scary dinosaur neither of us got him no what'd you get dog uh rampaging ferocidon which is actually a really good card oh limited. snap so it's definitely my pick uh it's a three three four three with menace players can't gain life and when it enter- when another creature enters the battlefield it deals one damage to that creature's controller it is perfect for limited I also That's have a Walk solid. the Plank, uh, which is good. Um, I'm not really sure about Wanted Scoundrels, to be honest. Um, contract Killing, good removal. That's about it. My So my take on uh, Wanted Scoundrels, if it's the one I think it is. Yeah, so m- in my opinion, and this is just an opinion, I'm okay with them getting their two clue tokens for mm-hmm. a 4-3 for me. Yeah, on I turn mean, I two, think so. I just like that so much more. Yeah, um, it's so much presence all at once. Uh, so I got Fleet Swallower. <laughs> Whenever Fleet Swallower attacks, target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded up into his or her graveyard. What a great card! This is a great card. <laughs> I don't care what you say. This I know. this is a great you card. You love this card. This is listen, people and Kevin mostly. <laughs> this is your bomb in control. Frank Sanity, Fleet yeah. Swallower, boom, there you go. You All you have to do is control the game, resolve this and protect it yeah. with Frank Sanity on the board. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have to connect. If you make it to a combat step and he's still there, you win. Yeah. Done. Yeah. You think you can play seven turns with Kevin in a control deck? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you've never done it before. No, definitely have not. It's Control sucks, don't play it. I Look, hate it. I'm telling you. It's me up for days. This, this is so freaking good. <laughs> um, it's probably my pick for limited. Um, other things, Dire Fleet Captain at two. Very good. Whenever Dire Fleet Captain attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other attacking pirate. That is really nice. Mm-hmm. It gives me two colors to build into. It gives me a theme to work around pirates. Uh, that guy is pretty good too. I do, yeah. I like territorial hammer skull at three again. Battlefield, a swing, a tap stuff. Yep, is an engine for combat at two. Bishop soldier, life link for two. Decent two. filler card, pretty good honestly. It's above average. So. There you go. I have spilled. This is this is a pretty good pack. The wind strider is actually not bad either. No, the wind strider is great. So at five, it's got flash and flying. So the reason I'm okay slotting wind strider in even if I've already got like kind of a higher curve, is I can play it with Flash on my opponent's turn. Yep. And it's nice. If I'm dead for, for things to do, I can just hold up mana, yep. scare them a bit, and then play him have a 3-3 in the air. It bad. works. All right. But, well, yeah. Fleet Swallower for you. Huh. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for sticking in with us for this episode. We hope this was actually a helpful episode for you guys. We really like doing these uh, sort of deck building helpers, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fun. I actually have enjoyed the last I enjoy two. It. I enjoyed it a lot. So 
we do we have a plan for the next episode is it going to continue with this deck building theme i don't know if you're so inclined let us we... know what you need help with yeah that's that, makes, a thing. that works out yeah yeah let us know yeah um anybody but... out there what do you want to see an episode on yeah tell us well, we might have figured now, it we'll out wait <laughs> comment down below <laughs> all right guys thank you to the awesome viewers thank you to grand slam for sponsoring yes. the packs thank you to will for being here thank you to this computer we should... we're gonna get out of here guys my name is kevin my name is will and this has been it resolves and it resolves and it resolves <laughs>